Hello everyone, my name is Vadim Mikhalenka from Online Training for Everyone. And today, I would like to share with you interesting questions you are very likely to come across on the test. With each question, I will share with you the answer, and if there is a pattern, I'll explain you how to detect it as well. If you are getting ready for the test, make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end to learn the key concepts and the way to find the solutions for the different problems. And if you pay attention to the questions and answers, I can guarantee you that it will increase how quickly you can solve each problem on your own. My goal is to explain you the solutions and to help you detect the patterns. I'm going to ask you for a favor. And no, not to subscribe to this channel, even though this is something you might consider doing as well. But if you see a different way of solving the challenge, please share it in comment sections so we all can learn. And also, if you know other test questions that you'd like us to cover in the future videos, please share them in comments. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's the question that on the surface seems very, very hard to solve. But in reality, the answer to this question is very simple. You're presented with five different squares. Squares one through four have shapes inside, and you need to determine the missing square 5. You are presented with four different choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the correct answer. Maybe give yourself 5 to 10 seconds or maybe longer 10 to 20 seconds. This is about as much time as you'll get on the real test. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As I mentioned, test writers are trying to trick you. And in this particular case, there is no pattern within the shape. It's all random. No matter how hard you try, you will not be able to determine any patterns among those small shapes. The pattern here is the decreasing number of shapes. If you look at the figure 1, it has 6 shapes. If you look at the figure 2, it has 5, 4, 3. So the answer for the figure 5, the number of inside shapes should be 2. So the correct answer here is choice C. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I am excited to take advantage of the opportunity and share with you how to solve these types of problems on the test. Typically, when you get a problem, you need to determine which object does not belong to the group. In this particular case, you need to determine which square doesn't belong to the group. You are presented with four different squares, choices A, B, C and D. Each square contains two circles inside. In the large circle, quarter of each circle is missing and instead replaced with the small circle. All squares also have triangles in the corner. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. The key to solving this challenge is to detect the pattern. This is the skill that you need to develop to be successful in the test. Because there are two shapes here present in this question, triangles and circles, you should try to detect the pattern among triangles and then among circles. In this particular question, there is only one pattern, pattern of the triangles. But there are some sophisticated questions in the test which might include patterns for both shapes. In this particular case, the pattern is that the square should contain the equal number of black and white triangles in the corners. Triangles in the square A positioned diagonally across each other. White triangles are located in the upper left corner and in the bottom right corner. And black triangles are located in the bottom left corner and in the upper right corner. You can see that the same pattern exists in the shape B, two white triangles and then two black triangles, and in the shape C, two black triangles on the left and two white triangles on the right. But if we look at the choice D, you see that there are four black triangles in the corners. Circles in this picture do not have a pattern, and their primary goal is to confuse you. If you look at the circles closely, you see that the large small circle pattern doesn't exist. We have black, white, shape B, black, white, shape C, white, black, and then shape D, white, white. 
Based on this information about the circles, we should ignore them and focus on the triangles inside the squares. This is why the odd shape, the shape that doesn't belong to the group, is the one that does not have equal distributions of all colors in the corners. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Very frequently on the test, you might be asked to detect the pattern. In this question, we're being asked which item comes next in the sequence. And we're presented with the sequence of items. Six items in the sequence are visible. Zero, two, six, 12, 20, and 30. And the next item is missing. And you're being asked to select one of the four following choices. Choice A, 42. Choice B, 44. Choice C, 46. And choice D, 48. Do you see the answer? It may or may not be obvious, depending upon your skills of detecting the pattern. Like it or not, we're going to continue and I'll share with you the answer. As with any type of question, the key is to determine the pattern. To determine the answer in this particular case, you need to increment previous number by the greater even digit in the sequence. You can even come up with the formula. And in our case, the formula to determine the next number would be current number plus 2 multiplied by current position. Let's see how it works. For example, let's take the number 0. This is the first number in the sequence. To determine the next number in the sequence, we need to add previous number, which is 0, and then 2 multiplied by 1, because number 0 has the first position in the sequence. Instead of using the formula, you can also use the next even number and add it to the previous number. The even numbers are 2, 4, 6, and you can increment them down the list. So you can add 2 to 0, the next one would be 4, 2 plus 4 equals 6, the next number would be 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, the next number would be 8, and 12 plus 8 equals 20. The number after that would be 10, so 20 plus 10 would be 30. And the number after that would be 12, and 30 plus 12 equals 42. The correct choice here is choice A, 42. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you might get a question which asks you to determine the sales increase. You're typically presented with the graph, which shows lines that represent different sales. In our case, we are represented with the chart that shows sales of cardio equipment from January to June, sales of bikes represented by the blue line, sales of elliptical represented by the orange line, and sales of treadmills are represented by the gray line. The question asks you to determine largest sales increase. Specifically, you need to determine which period represents the largest one month's number of item sales increase for cardio equipment sales. You have four different choices. Choice A, bikes from January to February. Choice B, bikes from February to March. Choice C, ellipticals, March to April. And choice D, treadmill, May to June. Do you see the answer? You may need to look closely to determine the correct answer for this question. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the right solution. Are you ready? We're going to move forward and cover the answer for this problem and get to the solution together. To answer this question, we need to look at the graph closely. For each data point on the graph, we need to determine the actual value. And once we have all the numbers, we need to answer the question by looking at the differences for equipment sales from months to months. Specifically, in this case, you need to evaluate four different choices that are represented by answers A through D. Let's do it together. Based on the chart, bike sales increased by two from January to February, and the increase was from five to seven items sold. Bike sales also increased by two from seven to nine between February and March. 
elliptical sales, on the other hand, increased by 7 from March to April, jumping from 2 to 9. And treadmill sales increased by 4 between May and June, going up from 2 to 6. So the correct answer here is choice C, elliptical sales from March to April, because jump was by 7 from 2 to 9. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. I'm extremely excited to share with you the question that tests your pattern recognition skills. You're presented with three columns. Each column has three numbers. In the first column, we see numbers 2, 7, 5. In the second, middle column, we see numbers 2, 3, and 4. And in the last, rightmost column, column number 3, we see numbers 10, 21, and then one number missing. You need to find the missing value, which is highlighted by question mark. You need to find the missing value, and you have four choices to choose from. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 16. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 36. Do you think you can recognize missing value? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The most important skill to solve these types of problems is pattern recognition skill. To recognize the pattern, you need to look closely into each column. Selective values in columns 1 and 2, by multiplication, get to the value in column 3. And this is our pattern. Let's take a closer look for the values that are already present. If we multiply 5 by 2, we get to the value of 10. Second set of values represented by the middle row. 7 multiplied by 3 equals 21. So the missing values here can be calculated by multiplying 2 by 4 and the end result would be equal to 8. So the correct answer to this problem is choice A, 8. I also wanted to share with you one of the typical mistakes people make as part of answering these types of questions. People start looking at the columns themselves. But unfortunately, there's no pattern just by looking in the values in column 1, since pattern just doesn't exist. If you look only at the values in column 1, or only at the values in column 2, or only at the values in column 3, you will not be able to come up with the answer. You have to look across and take a global view across multiple columns to get to the correct solution. Can you do me a favor? If you have a better way of solving this challenge, please share your thought process in the comment section of this video. I wanted to share with you a cool question which started showing up on the tests very recently. You're presented with the 3 by 3 matrix. Each square of the matrix contains another matrix inside with the 3 by 3 small squares. There are different colors inside 3 by 3 small squares. In this case, we see gray, white, and black. One 3 by 3 square is missing, and you need to select out of the four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. And your goal is to determine which of the following shapes completes the figure. Take a close look and see if you can identify the missing item. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. Well, when you look for the first time, you might be intimidated by this matrix. But the answer actually is very simple. If we look closely at the smaller matrices, you see that the letters are being formed. You see that in the upper left corner, black boxes form a letter V. And if we look at the upper right corner, you see that the letter V also shows up. But now it's turned clockwise from the previous position. Let's go to the second row. In the second row, you can recognize letter T. And this letter shows up in the left column. But if we look in the middle row, in the right column, you see that the same letter T now is turned 90 degrees from the previous position. So now, if we follow the same logic, you can recognize letter V in the bottom left corner. According to the pattern that we've identified, this letter should be turned 90 degrees in the bottom right corner. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. In case you need to practice with more questions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video.
Here is a very cool question that you frequently see on the test. You are presented with four rectangles. In each one of these rectangles, there are different shapes. Each shape is of the different color. Three rectangles have shapes present, and fourth rectangle on the right has all the shapes missing. You have four different choices to identify the missing item in the sequence. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you think you can come up with the answer? Give yourself some time. You can pause this video to see if you can identify the pattern. Give yourself 5 to 10, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get in the real test. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. In most types of problems, there are typically multiple patterns present. For example, let's look at the color pattern. If you look closely, you see that the first shape inside the rectangle is always black. Second shape is always purple. Third shape is always white. And the rightmost shape is always yellow. The second pattern that you can see if you look closely is the pattern of rotating shapes. You can see that the rightmost shape in the previous rectangle always becomes the leftmost shape in the next rectangle. For example, the yellow arrow from the first rectangle becomes the black arrow in the second rectangle. If you are able to identify at least one of these patterns, you will be able to solve this problem. Let's look at each of the answers and try to exclude the incorrect answers. For example, choice A does match the color pattern. But if you look closely, the next shape after the circle should be triangle and not the elf shape as it is currently presented in the choice A. Choice B can be excluded because it doesn't match the color pattern. As you can see, the yellow shape and white shape should be swapped to match the color pattern. Choice C is the correct answer. It does meet requirements for both patterns. And choice D does not match the color pattern. Two rightmost shapes are yellow. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. But in case you need more questions like this, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. This is one of my favorite questions, and there is a very high chance that you will get it on the assessment test. How many triangles do you see? You're presented with the shape on the left. There is a large triangle, and there are also lines inside of this large triangles. You have four different choices. Choice A, nine triangles. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 17. And choice D, 24. One triangle is highlighted in red, but there are a lot of other triangles. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a few seconds. I would recommend 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get in the real test. You can pause this video to give yourself some time to figure out the answer. I am going to continue and reveal the correct solution so we can get to the answer together. I counted 12 triangles in this picture. Is this what you got too? Let me show them all for you. I'll start with the smaller triangles and then go to the medium-sized ones, and then go to the large ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Did you come up with the different answer? Please share your thought process in the comment section of this video so we can all learn from your perspective. Hopefully you nailed this question and got to the correct answer on your own. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.